you will watch G.I. Joe the movie. This I command. All right, friends, it's your main man Z here from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I'm going to take you down a trip through memory lane because I just watched it myself and I felt this would be a great time, a great experience to share. G.I. Joe, the 1987 movie. I cannot tell you. See, my mind had built up this movie to be something incredible and precious to me. And then when I watched it again, looking back from today's lens, it's still freaking awesome. <laughs> I still love this movie. Uh, now, some people may think differently and they may think it's cheesy or what have you, but I, this is what's interesting about this movie is it, it comes off the back of the. Um, I did a tiny bit of research about, about this. Don't expect me to come with any like mind blowing facts. This isn't what this is about me, just telling you about what I think about this movie and my experience. But there's some, th like, uh, it had come off the Transformers movie, which was a, a bomb. And one of the reasons why it was a bomb, and it was a cash grab, they were trying to replace all the old uh, vehicles and characters and uh, robots or whatever, the Transformers, with new, better ones where they are hoping you'd come out of the theater with them. But they underestimated one thing. You can't kill Daddy because they went and they killed off uh, everybody's favorite character, which was they went and killed uh, Optimus Prime, obviously. Spoiler alert for those who haven't seen that 83 movie or whenever it came out, maybe 84, I don't know. But anyway, uh, kids were traumatized, myself included. I was horrified at that movie. So funny enough, this movie, and spoilers to come, obviously, because we're just going to break this down. They were going to do the same thing with this, and they were going to kill Duke, but they made the smart decision. They learned from their mistakes, and they did not kill Duke. In fact, Duke survives Serpenter's attack. And what I love about this movie, too, is it just throws you into this. As if you had any idea what was going on, you, you, <laughs> they were like, the kids know. They know what's going on. They're caught up to all the episodes. There's no, we're not catching you up on anything. But to know anything about this movie, you must know Serpentor. And I remember this as a kid, I guess. I, I don't remember. I don't think I saw it in the theater. I have no idea how I saw this movie. I just saw it whenever, however old I was. Um, but the whole point was that Dr. Mindbender of Cobra decides that they need a superior leader to Cobra Commander, as you may know, who uh, ends up being Serpentor, voiced by Dick Gautier, right? And they decided to put together a bunch of historical figures. They go, went around over five episodes, and I thought it was really cool because when I was a kid, I don't recall seeing any anything like an arc like that you have to remember tv shows from that era were like a team and and those are live action shows but shows in general were episodic you know monster of the week or heist of the week or case of the week it was very episodic there were no over there were no arcs and and this was a five episode arc which i thought was really cool it's called arise serpentor serpentor arise so they took um, they were getting. They were trying to make the perfect warrior in a cloning machine. So they were taking Julius Caesar, Napoleon Bonaparte, Attila the Hun, Philip II of M Macedon, uh, his son Alexander the Great, Ivan the Tel Terrible, Vlad the Impaler, Hannibal, Genghis Khan, Gregory Rasputin, Montezuma, Geronimo, Eric the Red, and a fictional Egyptian general named uh, Zanath Amontoth. And they are also going to stick. They were going to get Sun Tzu's DNA, but it was thwarted by Sergeant Slaughter. And they used Sergeant Slaughter's DNA instead, but somehow... All right, the whole thing gets crazy, right? So all you need to know is this movie um, comes about with... It's really a movie about Cobra. It's not so much about G.I. Joe. I mean, there are things... Obviously, G.I. Joe is, is important to it, but the, the movie itself is, in my mind, a story about Cobra and the leadership and whoever did this movie like whoever conceived of it was high as f this is some of the most bizarre imagery i think i've ever seen in a movie so as far as like going from one end of the spectrum of like you know pretty normal military stuff to whatever the heck is going on in cobra law but let's get into it i love this opening sequence it is freaking awesome 
So you get this amazing shot of like the Statue of Liberty and uh, there's like balloon, they're doing a celebration or something. And then uh, there's balloons going up and it's just, you know, I would play more of it, but I don't want to get pulled. But this drop ship comes up, there we go. And Cobra soldiers start coming down and that's when the song kicks in and it's like, doom, 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 doom. It's like something in the night, Cobra. Cobra! Like the song is like, it's crazy because it starts, it's about Cobra and it eventually develops into the G.I. Joe song. So then you have this crazy battle at the Statue of Liberty, which is just freaking awesome. Sergeant Slaughter. Oh yeah, who stars in this, by the way? Because I didn't read the uh, the stuff that well, but Burgess Meredith as Golobulus and Don Johnson is Falcon, I'm gonna, Lieutenant Falcon, Don Johnson, Lieutenant Falcon. What's interesting though, is it starts off with this, and that's what I'm saying, it's really about Cobra, because it starts off with a fight, an argument really, uh, between Cobra Commander and Serpentor, where they're saying that, you know, Cobra Commander's useless and a coward, and they don't need him anymore, and they basically brand him a traitor. Uh, when they all of a sudden have an intruder in their midst, that turns out to be somebody from Cobra La, which is Pythona. She she breaks in here. She sneaks into the Cobra Terror Drone. I don't know what the heck the thing's called. It's been a long time, people. Like I don't remember all the toys and all the characters and everything. But long story short, is they they, uh, they break in and they they twist everything. They say. You know, Dr. Mindbender didn't really think of Serpentor himself. It was implanted in his brain. They retcon, this old school retconning, right? Oh, he implanted something into your brain to make you think about that this is the real, this wasn't your idea, this was my idea. So she goes on and uh, explains that he, you know, this has been embedded in his mind that he was meant to meet her. And there's this whole Cobra, crazy Cobra village thing that they have to go visit. Really crazy, right? There she is, Pythona. She hot. I'm sure they sold some action figures of her. I'm sure. I have no idea. And then you get up to this part. This part I think is kind of funny. You get to the Joe story, which is they're protecting the BET from Cobra. Why Cobra wants to cancel the BET? I'm sure BET is a fine network. Why would you try to cancel it? But in reality, it's the broadcast energy transmitter. Some crazy MacGuffin that gives energy off. Who the heck knows? Makes sparkly lights. Cobra has plans for it. I guess to power their machines. I, I don't exactly know their original plan. I know what their later plan is for it. So anyway, they're they're go. I guess they're grabbing it because they were told by Py by Pythona to, to grab it. And why it's in the Himalaya? I don't know what's going on here. I just I'm just enjoying. The fact that no one hits anybody. They're really good at blowing up machines, but not a soul gets hurt. You know, it's it's pretty awesome. Look, it's a kid's show. You, you don't need to see people getting blown apart. This is not Saving Private Ryan, mind you. So there's the BET in all its glory, uh, Black Entertainment Television. Maybe that was the sole place that broadcast Black Entertainment Television, and G.I. Joe was protecting it like good soldiers, which they should. So this turns out to be a route for Cobra. They end up losing... And they do um, show you a little bit about Serpentor's gonna use his, his snaky thing, but he doesn't. And they end up blaming the defeat. They have Zartan and his dreadnoughts, pretty awesome. I love those characters, they're great. In the bayou, I guess, is where they're from. Again, I don't remember much, just what I saw in this movie, but they end up retreating into Cobra La. Nobody really knows what's going on here. And you've got Roadblock and his division going after them here. And they f eventually retreat back. And I, I just thought the design of this was cool. I thought the Cobra la, 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 la. soldiers are awesome. Like I said, whoever was designing this thing was like crazy. And they do give an explanation at some point where Galobulus explains that this is, it's biomechanical tech. Like humans created mechanical tech and these guys were around before it, but there was an ice age and they couldn't handle it. And they had biotech, which comes into play later. It's a, it's a pretty cool concept. Like, I thought it was cool. I don't know where they got it from, but I like it. There's Zartan. And then you get to the uh, whole part with the new guys. So these are the new troops they're trying to introduce, like Tunnel Rat and Jinx and this basketball player and Chuckles and the whoever. Law and Order, I think he says their name is. And they're going through and Beachhead's 
running them through their things and they're showing you they all have special little abilities to do stuff i thought that was really cool where tunnel rats like yeah i ain't going through this obstacle course i'm just gonna go through the sewers isn't that the way we're supposed to do it that's what i would do and then the dog <laughs> he can't get the dog the dog sniffs out the bomb but he keeps bringing it back and then you've got chuckles here who's like absolutely ridiculous he just like the car stops working, so he grabs the missile and just throws it at the, the vehicle. Whatever, it's crazy. Jinx, she fights better when she's uh, blindfolded. And then you get this guy. This is pretty cool that Falcon, Don Johnson's just a ladies' man, and Don Johnson doesn't care. First of all, I think he's Lieutenant Rock. How did he get to be a Lieutenant in G.I. Joe? It, maybe he wasn't in G.I. Joe yet, but how did he get to be a Lieutenant with this bad training of his? Like... He's pretty terrible at everything and is like basically relegated to guard duty. I guess we're going to call it nepotism because he's taking this girl around and he's showing her how awesome it is. First of all, this guy gets chumped so many times. Like Cobra has some really interesting skills, which I think are we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get to those. Uh, I actually think he do it twice to him. He gets chumped by girls twice. I think this is the Baroness, and then later it's Zartan's cousin or sister. I think it's his sister. I forget her name. But here, he's showing her all the secrets, and Duke's like, bro, I think they're stepbrothers, right? Or half-brothers. I forget. But he's like, bro, what are you doing? This is top secret. What are you showing these people stuff for? Yeah, and then she takes off. I'm 99% sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the Baroness does the same thing, but this was this was Zartan's sister. Look, it, it, she's chucking the... I'm trying to get her. There she is. Come on, baby. Where's your uh, costume? There she is. She's stripping down to her bathing suit. Pretty risque for the children's. Pretty risque, if I do say so myself. Come on, give me like one more... So there she goes. Strips down, takes her wig off. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Zartan... <laughs> so she got everything. So she finds out where the BET is, right? Gives the information back. I guess what happens here? Oh, this is before Roadblock's group gets captured. Oh, Roadblock leaves, leads a mission into Cobra Law where everything is bonkers. Everything is crazy. Everything's a creature. Everything does something. This is crazy. And it's, I mean, when you have a huge cast of all, you have like Lady J, and Scarlet and Duke and all these other characters. I like the fact that Roadblock gets a real big part because he's one of my favorite characters. He does a lot of good work here. Like maybe not character, maybe a little bit of character development too, which I thought was interesting for like a kids movie, right? So then you get introduced. Uh, they're finally gonna meet the head of of Cobra Log. You've got Golobulus here. Come on, there's the man. And that dude's just crazy. I remember his action figure was nuts because he's a big snake man. And, like, how do you go from, like, pretty basic military stuff to this? I mean, so what a 180. And they were just, like, they're just going for it, man. Just going for it. I think it's pretty cool. So then the rookies, there's a tribunal. And instead of getting, I also thought this was cool. Instead of getting kicked out because... They know that he basically screwed everything up and gave away the location of the BET and everything. They sentence Lieutenant Falcon, he, uh, fate worse than hell. <laughs> he has to go train with Sergeant Slaughter. Pretty big deal. Then they have the trial of Cobra Commander, which I also thought was awesome. So just think about it. You got all these like different components here of, of this crazy story where one man who's a fool has to learn how to be better. And then you have one man's arrogance turns out to be you know and his incompetence you know he gets put on trial kind of heavy stuff for a kid then they give the i guess this is the big reveal too he gives away the plan which is to launch these spores into space but they talk about cobra commander's original what he looks like behind the mask something we've been all been curious for like a millennia right for a million years what does the man look like he says something like oh this handsome up-and-comer in my army Galobulus says this and I'm like bro you were kind of disfigured before like you weren't handsome you were a weird looking dude before this any of this happened uh, and then they expose Co Cobra Commander to the spores right and I just thought this was like 
the defining moment of like, oh my gosh, what does Com Cobra Commander look like under his thing? And then they just turn him into a, a snake man anyway, which is kind of like they spray him with the spores here. And he's just like, Aah! where is the thing where it shows, you know, the thing. There he is. He just looks like a weird dude already. And then he gets disfigured. And his disfigurement is just like, he's already pretty ugly. And he just gets like a million eyes on his head, which is disgusting. But you already look pretty disgusting. Like it's it's not like you double down on your disgusting. I don't know. All right. So anyway, uh, Nemesis Commander, that guy's pretty, or Nemesis Enforcer, he's pretty cool. Let's see if I can find him. He doesn't say anything. He just kind of grunts at people and kills things. So he's cool. I like him with the wings. But they punish him, and then they drop Falcon off, and he's getting beat up by these, you know, misfits uh, being trained by Sergeant Slaughter, a bunch of, like, former Cobra guys or whatever they are, weird circus trainer guys, and he's getting a rough time, and they make him walk back. Sergeant Slaughter's like, your first mission is to go walk back, brother! Sergeant Slaughter, former uh, re uh, official WWE or WWF pro professional wrestler. I remember liking him because i think i liked wrestling because of him uh, again these are all just mysteries but seeing him in this was awesome i was like oh that's so good this is so good more cobra law stuff he's transforming then roadblock grabs him and uh, manages to escape the living hell that is cobra law where it just it, everything grabs you and everything beats you up training montages of uh lieutenant falcon getting beat up all good stuff here they sneak in. He decides to challenge them. Like, oh, if we're going to do this, let's make it more difficult. So they're going to sneak into the terror drum or whatever the heck it's called and uh, not bring any weapons and get in and out. We're going to get in and we're going to get out. So they, they they find the location, I guess, of Cobra La and the whole mission and what they're going to do and what they want to do with the BET. And this was a cool part, too, where Sergeant Slaughter's like, uh... Falcon gets captured. Lieutenant Falcon gets captured. And they won't let him. You're also setting up the Nemesis Enforcer fight. The big fight between Nemesis Enforcer and Sergeant Slaughter. What a great matchup. Sergeant Slaughter gets bested this time. But, you know, it is what it is. They won't leave him alone, though. He's getting tortured by... He's getting beat up and, and tortured by Nemesis Enforcer. And they're beating him up. And Sergeant Slaughter's like, we either all go or we don't go. Which is awesome. They set, That's a setup for later. Set up and call back. It's always a good thing to do. Big fight. I remember these boats were cool. I think they sold them somewhere. Sergeant Slaughter's little truck thing they sold. All these cool toys. So they go to find the BET. And they, they go full frontal assault on the, on the, the Joe base. They won't let the young dudes go, but this is the first part where you get the real idea of the the uh, this tech, this weird biological tech that they have where they're gumming up everything and they're using like crazy monsters. I mean, just like uh, your normal G.I. Joe stuff. You have these cra like tanks and stuff, and then all of a sudden you have giant sandworm creatures coming out of the ground and dudes with wings ripping things apart like this was such a departure from what you were used to seeing as a kid it was kind of mind-blowing and almost incomprehensible like what is going on here i didn't sign up for this or did i i mean i was all in i don't know about you but i was i was definitely all in so we keep going and uh it's just some great I don't know. I just love this. Lieutenant Falcon riding, shooting a bazooka on the side. They come in and save the day. And, and I mean, save the day in the sense that they still got the BET. But here's the big scene where Duke was supposed to die. He jumps in front of uh, a snake meant for Lieutenant Falcon. And he gets stabbed right in the heart, I'm guessing, with the snake. See, he's got the spiky, snaky. They grab the, the BET right there. So here you have Duke mortally wounded. Real pinch. And then you have the ticking time clock of Galobulus saying that the whole world's going to get turned into sneaky guys. Just got to love them sneaky guys. I, I love this. Roadblock is carrying command Cobra Commander as he de-evolves into a total snake man. They should have sold that as a figure. I don't know if they did, but... Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But he's like, I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I used to be a man. Well, 
not really. You were kind of an alien freak thing, but whatever. So Roblox escapes. Oh, Roblox got blinded too, which was cool. He had to overcome like all these like adversities. Where he's just like, I'm blind, I can't see, and it was pretty cool. Uh, so this weird, I don't know why you count your time and how fast it takes the snakes to climb down or up a little pointy thing, but whatever, man. So the Joes end up attacking, but don't realize that they're going right into a trap because Roadblock didn't get out in time to warn them. And then the young guys show up and, and Cobra Commander's like total snake now. But then they, they go back in, right? Is that how this goes down? Oh, they, they steal, that's right. Tunnel Rat uses his skill set, finds a tunnel to go in that the these guys are, are going to blow up. They're going to seal the inside so they can't get in to keep the spores from coming in. See how they actually thought about the plot just a tiny bit? This plot makes more sense than any Transformers movie that ever happened, like the Michael Bay movies. This plot is like more complicated and actually makes more sense for an hour and a half kids movie. So they end up stealing their rides and sneaking them in so they can sneak past and shoot down all the uh, the Joes that are there. Why you leave the Joes with weapons, I don't know, but um, so they pick up all their weapons and they start fighting. Oh, and then this part was crazy, where Globulus like releases everything that's possible. Like the bridges that were alive all have to defend Cobra Law, which is just, this part was just bonkers, like blew my mind. I still can't believe, like, giant spider things and slug things just eating people. Like, this is horrific. Tunnel Rat ends up going, like, inside the belly of this thing and having to blow himself out of it. Like, it's just... This is just crazy. No child should have to endure this. <laughs> this is so wild. Oh, you gotta love it. Yeah, they're, they're fighting all these crazy monsters. And then the this great fight between Serpentor and um, Lieutenant Falcon... Jinx fights Pythona. This part is is she she kills like the the thing that was holding Co Cobra Commander from the uh, for the trial. And then you've got what else have you got here? This part is great. Sergeant Slaughter has to fight Nemesis Enforcer at some point. Yeah, this this clamshell thing ends up falling over, and Jinx beats her by being blindfolded. The part I love is uh, oh, Sergeant Slaughter gets his big battle with Nemesis Enforcer. Serpentor gets himself into trouble because he's wearing a cape. And I just thought that was hysterical. Like, none of the Joes, the Joes are all dressed like, you know, like soldiers. He puts Serpentor's cape into the intake of his little flying throne thing. And it causes, causes him to fall, which is just fantastic. Yeah, look, Globulus becomes a snake man. He reveals his, like, final form. But then he like just jumps back in the ball and flies away. I don't I don't really get all that. But you get the idea. He throws a snake at him, and then that's really cool. He's saved by Cobra Commander. I thought that was cool. Co Cobra Commander serves a purpose with his snake. Yeah, his cloak, his his cape here is gonna kick he's gonna stuff it into the intake. Oh, that's great. And then um he gets attacked by Snake Globulus. And then he hops away in his little thing. And then they destroy all, they overheat the spores. Fantastic, right? What a great idea. Wish I'd thought of it. And then they, 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 <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter swings around Jinx so that he can jump on and he can pull him across this, this, this divide. And then everybody's happy. Everybody makes out, which I don't know if you would get that in today's day and age. Destroy Cobra Law. Everybody's happy. They look at everything. And I, I don't know what happened. I guess. Globulus just gets away and or he, they, I guess they did they fall down into that like ravine I know Nemesis Enforcer does and I'm supposing Serpentor's Serpentor survives too but oh it's gruesome I forgot about that part he like that was gruesome they didn't show it but he stabs Globulus in the eye with the uh with the little counting snake thing I knew like it served a purpose it had a purpose. You used to, <laughs> like, it has dual purposes. Not only does it count time, but it stabs you right in the eye. So, uh, and then he escapes, gets right back in his little pod and flies away. And then never to be seen ever again. I don't know how you top this. I would love to see a live action remake of this. I don't know if it's humanly possible, but 
I would take it. I have no idea. I hope that I was able to ramble through this nonsense and, and give you a, uh, a good description of what happened. Some of the highs, some of the lows. Some of the lows, I mean, as kids' movies, so you don't get the same kind of character development that you'd want, but I do like the setups and the payoffs. I think that's a hallmark of pretty good writing. You have the setup of, uh, you know, Falcon getting chumped by the girls, and then I think there was a part where Baroness snuck in, too. Like, the payoff of the first Nemesis Enforcer fight with Sergeant Slaughter, and Sergeant Slaughter getting his, uh, bringing a whooping down. I just, it was so much fun to watch this again. I, I, maybe I'm too traumatized to watch the Transformers movie. If you'd like me to watch that, please let me know. I hope this took you down a trip down memory lane. I tried to hit all the high points that I could. We got the basic plot. They saved the, well, the BET blows up. So I guess <laughs> the BET is still alive. It's still going on. It's in our hearts. <laughs> I just thought that was too weird. Oh, what a good movie though. And so many toys that came from it. I'll have to, maybe I'll do some, uh, some digging. I didn't really collect those toys. If you can see in the background, I mostly have Godzilla toys and I have uh, Star Wars toys. I don't know what happened to all my G.I. Joe. You, you know the problem with the G.I. Joe toys is they all had rubber bands in the middle of the figures. They were like some of the best action figures. I, I thought they were the greatest. Uh, and the vehicles were amazing. Always great designs on the vehicles. Always super functional. Really amazing toy line. But the characters, you would like pull them apart and the, the band in the middle would break and you'd never be able to fix them again. And once that was done, they were just basically body parts for you to do it with, as you would. And uh, yeah, I don't know if they, I think that rubber would, the, the rubber band in the middle would decay and like end up breaking or you would just pull them too much and break them apart. I don't know, tell me your experiences with the, your G.I. Joe action figures. But I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed going through this. I love this movie. I can't, it, it, it's just, I think even beyond the nostalgia, it still holds up on some level. I mean, it's pretty confusing if you don't know all of the characters. Uh, but they don't go too in depth. Like the uh, what are the twins' names? Zaymont and Zom something. Oh man, you guys are gonna kill me. Tell me the name in the in the comments because I can't remember. But there's like the twins. They don't really go into that too much. They have like one little part where one's injured and he drops a gun. But they kind of like gloss over a lot of characters, which you would have liked to at least see a little bit more. But it's an hour and a half. It's a cartoon. What do you expect? But it was awesome. If you want more trips down memory lane, let me know. Tell me in the comments what else you'd like me to watch. Maybe I have a, some sort of take on that. Some hot, hot take. Uh, but I really enjoyed this one. I can't recommend it enough. Please watch it and enjoy. And you can catch our full-length audio podcast. It's free on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Just search Our Reviews Will Kill You. You'll find us. We're there, I promise you. You can also catch us live stream, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Times on Friday nights come party with us and it's a real good time and uh, if you want to interact with us check out instagram orc underscore you and instagram and uh shout out shout us uh, give us a direct uh you can dm us there slip in some some pics if there's something i missed please let me know in the commentary i'm sure there's a ton that i missed i tried my best and i hope you enjoyed if you did like and subscribe we are but a small channel and perhaps today we earned that subscription from you, but I really enjoyed this one. Give me some recommendations, and I'll catch you on the next one, because I am out to the next one. Uh -huh.